Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are going to take a look at the two different semi-automatic versions of the Semi L that are available in the US. We have here an HMG version and a Markholmar version. And there are a couple things that the two guns do differently. So let's dig right in and take a look at where they're similar and where they're different. Well, I like markings, so let's start with markings. This is the Markholmar gun, and they nailed the receiver markings on these guns. Uh, I should say there really aren't any markings on the original Setmiels aside from this stuff and what we'll see on the opposite side. So this is all we all that there needs to be on the gun, and this looks like an almost perfect duplicate of what the originals, how the originals were marked. That's your serial number. However, over here. The selector markings have been done for the American market, and they are S for safe and F for fire. HMG actually got these a little more appropriate. They, they copied the original selector markings, uh, leaving off the full auto one. Uh, these are S for safe and T for tiro, or fire in Spanish. Um, I apologize, these markings are a little harder to see because I didn't go through and wipe them in uh, the way that Markholmar does, which really makes them pop and look good. As for the other markings, HMG kind of has them right, but not quite the right fonts, not quite the right sizing. Um, we have our serial number here, and then the receiver markings there. So uh, this one, by the way, I made this rifle, so we deliberately put in FW instead of ET, just because it seemed like a cool idea. However, you can see that the caliber markings here and the set me designation uh, don't quite match the originals. On the reverse side there is this round embossing stamp on the, the right side of the receiver. Uh, on the originals this had a Santa Barbara logo, because they're the factory that originally made them. On HMG's production guns they have a little triangular HMG logo here. This one doesn't, because again I made this one uh, at HMG, using all of their processes, uh, and we just didn't put that on. What Mark Holmar has done is effectively copy that logo. Um, this is stylistically identical to the Santa Barbara logo, except where the original gun said SB for Santa Barbara. Uh, these say MCM for Mark Holmar. Uh, they have also added one little line down here that they don't white in, that's very subtle, uh, and those are the markings that are legally required uh, with Mark Holmar's formal name and location. Now when these came into the country as parts kits after the Spanish surplused them, uh, they were cut up so that they weren't complete rifles. This is part of the legal importation process. Uh, and in doing so the receivers were destroyed and the barrels were destroyed. So both companies had to make or subcontract their own barrels and receivers. This is perhaps one of the most visible differences between the two guns. On the original Setme L the ejection port has this little flared um, element to it right there. And Mark Holmar went ahead and made receivers that actually have that flare properly copied. HMG did not. This was an area where they were able to simplify the process of making their receiver stampings by keeping them basically two-dimensional and not trying to include that flare. So uh, it's really easy to distinguish an HMG flat because, well, it doesn't have that flared section. Now let's talk surface finish for a moment. Uh, HMG used a kind of a, a matte uh, dark parkerizing finish where uh, Mark Holmar has a much darker, bluer, and shinier finish. The HMG one is, as far as I can tell, actually a little bit more authentic to the way the original guns were done, at least based on the one uh, original intact uh, full auto one that was imported uh, that I got a chance to see. I think there are three of those in the country, and in fact I I think Markelmar has at least one of them now that they use as a basis um, for some of their developmental work. At any rate, um, two slightly different finishes there. Now you'll notice that the finish on the handguards is also is in fact more substantially different, and this is another element that where there's a significant disparity between the two guns. Um, Markelmar took the the original parts that Markelmar used. Every single one of them was refinished. So if we look at some bits like the bolt carriers here, you'll see that this one, the HMG gun, has a really heavy line of wear on the bolt carrier where it was rubbing on the inside of the receiver, where the Markholmar gun is nice and pristine looking. This is still an original surplus bolt carrier, but Markholmar went through uh, and refinished all of their small components. And you'll see this on 
pins, magazine release buttons, all of all of the small bits. They look brand new on the Mark Holmar gun because they were refinished. HMG didn't bother to do that. Taking that concept and expanding it quite a bit, uh, Mark Holmar also went ahead and actually remanufactured all new furniture for the guns. New handguards, new pistol grips, and new buttstocks. HMG just used the original furniture from the kits. And I think the reason for this is that HMG did very few of these, something like a hundred guns, and they did them very early on. And I think they were able to kind of get the, the choicest pick of parts kits that had furniture that was in reasonably good condition. However, if you look at this, this handguard, for example, you can still see that it, it's got a lot of wear and tear on it. This has been banged around quite a bit. And the buttstock as well. This isn't wear that I've put on the gun, this is how this component was when I originally got it. You can see this stuff from people hammering on the pins, you know, over several decades of military service, that sort of thing. Now when Mark Holmar got these parts kits, they looked at, at these components and decided that this just wasn't suitable for a new production gun. They planned to make the receivers and all the small parts look brand new, and they it would look really incongruous to pair brand new mechanical parts with furniture that looks like it's been in the Spanish army for 30 years. So they went and made their own, and frankly they did a really fantastic job of it. It's very difficult to tell the difference unless you have the two parts side by side. So this is the new Mark Holmar pistol grip, this is the original Spanish one. Uh, people, by the way, will talk about whether or not they matched the colour exactly perfectly. The fact of the matter is, kind of like, like Finnish M62 camo, there is a wide variety of colours in the original Spanish set me parts. And there is no such thing as the exact right colour to match the Spanish set me L, because there was a, a range of them. They just didn't care that much about making every single one of them exactly identical. So Mark Holmar picked a, a green hue that fit kind of in the middle of all of the examples they had, and they went with it. And like I said, they really got into the details. So things like the, the actual location of the sprue marks and the feed into the polymer moulds for these parts, they matched. So you can see that there. And here, this is a little bit subtle, I think you can see it right there and right there on the original handguard here. We have the little round sprue marks, uh, you know, where this was cut off of the, the extra polymer from when it was molded, and Mark Holmar matched the size and location of those sprue marks. So they really took, they, they went the extra mile in making sure that their new production furniture was as close to exact as uh, to the original as possible. That also applies to things like the metal stampings for the sling swivel in the buttstock. These are all brand new, uh, made to exactly match the originals without being all banged up uh, from 30 years in Spanish service. I cannot give you a good example of the welding from HMG, because my HMG rifle here was welded by me, and that shouldn't be taken as representative of anything done by anyone who has a clue what they're doing with a welder. However, I will point out that on the HMG guns, this little section here uh, over the rear trunnion is left unwelded, and that matches how the originals were done. Mark Holmar actually did a bit of extra work and filled that up a bit. It makes it look better, I think it makes people feel a little bit better about it. Um, so slight difference there. Now everyone's favourite subject for parts kit builds, compliance parts. Uh, 922 subsection R of the US Code specifies uh, that you cannot manufacture or import a rifle that has more than 10 foreign made parts, and they have a specific list of what parts count for purposes of this law. Uh, so if someone builds a gun from a parts kit like these, uh, you have to provide enough American made parts that you don't have 10 of the listed foreign parts in the gun. It's complicated and stupid. Um, and it's largely there as a protectionist thing. However, because Mark Holmar made all new furniture, uh, it just so happens that the buttstock, the handguard, and the pistol grip are components in this list of parts that qualify for 922. The upshot of this is it means Mark Holmar was able to use the original muzzle devices from Spanish production, which are also one of the listed parts. HMG used original furniture, meaning that all three of these, the grip, stock, and uh, handguard, count as foreign made parts, 
And for that reason, they had to manufacture their own duplicates of the muzzle device. You'll see the big old USA there. This is an American-made SETME-L muzzle brake, or flash hider. Now because of details of this law, which are a little more elaborate than we need to get into today, uh, roller delayed guns like this actually have a bit of an advantage, and that muzzle device is the only, uh, the only change really that HMG had to do. Remember that they were also making these guns with American-made receivers and American-made barrels, because those didn't come in with the parts kits. Uh, however, on both of these rifles, both the Mark Omar and the HMGs, technically you cannot legally put a Spanish-made magazine into them, they, or, or any foreign-made magazine. They have to use American-made magazines because the magazine body, floor plate, and follower are parts on this legal list of what qualifies for American-made or not. Uh, so both of these rifles were shipped with American magazines. You really can't tell by looking at them, but the springs are also one of, in fact, probably the most substantial difference between these two manufacturers. First off, you can see that this, being the HMG uh, spring guide, is heavily worn. Mark Omar refinished those parts, so this one looks like it's new. In addition, Mark Omar actually spent a substantial amount of time uh, re-engineering the springs, and they made all new springs for these rifles. Um, the original springs were really probably the, one of the biggest weak points of the SETME-L design. Uh, the guns were largely unreliable because of them, also magazine design was at fault there. Uh, but Mark Omar fixed that, in effect, by rebuilding all the springs. So can't see it from the outside, but these the Mark Omar guns really do have an advantage in their likelihood of actually running correctly straight out of the box. Um, with I, I got lucky, this spring seems to be in pretty good shape uh, for my Set Me L. Uh, Carl, of course, my buddy, had uh, substantial issues getting his to run and had to put a, a heavy spacer uh, in the end of the recoil spring uh, track to pre-compress the spring, which is not a good solution, but that's what it took to get it to work. Also, and you can't really see this because I don't have a production version of the HMG gun, uh, Mark Omar put a lot more time into proper jigs and fixtures for building these guns, and they're going to be a lot more uniform, uh, and they're, they're done a lot more effectively than HMGs, which were all done individually by hand. Now for those of you who are more interested in the technical details, there is also a slight difference in how these were uh, made into semi-autos. So this is the Mark Omar gun. By the way, they actually manufactured brand new trigger boxes uh, for the, the guns, rather than modify original ones. That does help them with their 922 parts kit, parts count. At any rate, uh, they have this big uh, milled down panel area right here, where on the HMG guns, they use the original trigger boxes and mill out this corner right there. Now that is done so that uh, you can put a blocking bar in the receiver so that an original unmodified fire control group will not fit. Both of these are of course semi-automatic only fire control groups. In the HMG gun, the blocking bar is that long continuous bar uh, up there where on the Mark Omar guns they just have this sort of shorter rectangular section uh, right here. And you can see how that section fits in with that uh, denial space. And the same thing there for the HMGs. This presents itself in one noticeable place. The Mark Omar gun has a weld, a pair of welds actually right here, where they're attaching the receiver to that internal blocking bar where the HMG receiver does not. One other little detail, since I've got this out, uh, set me L's are a tremendous pain in the butt to disassemble, uh, because you actually have to, if you take the bolt carrier out on the semi-autos, you have to take the fire control group out before you can reinstall the bolt carrier. And that seems like a tremendously stupid way to design the gun. And that's correct. In their original full auto military form, you don't have to do that. You can leave the trigger group in, pull the bolt out, clean it, and put it back. And the reason for that is with the full auto parts installed, the hammer will be held back all the way like this by the full auto disconnector. That has to be removed for the semi-auto guns, which means that the hammer normally rests here, which is perfectly fine for semi-auto functionality. But it means that when this is in the gun and the bolt is, is inserted, 
the bolt hits the back of the hammer here in a way that if it's held down all the way the bolt would be able to go right over the top and reinstall. So if you were wondering why the Spanish made such a dumb decision manufacturing, you know, designing the gun, that's your answer. They actually didn't, that's an artifact of the semi-auto conversion process. So there you have the two available patterns of semi-auto set me out. I think in general most people would probably be more happy with the MCM gun, the Markholmar guns. However, for those folks who really prefer to have the battle-worn, kind of a little bit originally beat up sort of look, um, the, the HMG guns offer that original furniture. Now there is a possibility, of course, of taking original furniture and putting it back on a Mark Olmar gun. If you want to do that legally, uh, you would have to replace the muzzle device uh, with an American-made one. You, in theory you could replace one of the other foreign made parts, but there really aren't any other proper options that you could do. So um, that is an option out there for folks who want to do that. Well I hope you guys got something out of that. Uh, it's interesting to me the way different companies take different paths and different approaches in doing some of this sort of work. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.